proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. From St. Mark, this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we reach the first Sunday of Lent. I'm sure those of you like me who spent some time outside will have seen that nature is starting to awaken once more. We can see great carpets of snowdrops and the star, just the very start of daffodils are beginning to bud. And buds appearing on the first of the trees too. Each day, the daylight gets a little bit longer and the darkness recedes a little further. And winter, with its oh so very short days, and oh so very long nights, is beginning to reach the end of its course. Spring is coming. The word Lent is an old Anglo-Saxon word which means spring. And so, even as we think of it as an austere and important time, a dark time perhaps, with it comes the lightness and hope of spring as well. The Gospels tell us that in preparation for the earthly ministry of our Lord and Saviour, he was driven out into the desert, into this wilderness of Lent. And there, in this bleak and barren desert landscape, where the wind howls and hunger gnawed at his bones, he spent forty days deep in reflection, meditation, prayer and fasting. The wilderness is far away from the towns, the villages which were well known to our Lord, far from the comforts of home, surrounded by wild beasts, as the Gospels tell us, but ministered to by angels. Our Lord enjoyed, or endured, solitude. And he was tested and tried by Satan. This was necessary, a time of preparation, a time of getting ready, a time of sweeping away the things that don't matter. Ready to prepare our Lord, who was truly God and truly man, for the important work which he was to undertake. Our Lord came into his earthly ministry then, with those important words, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Our Lord echoes those proclamations and herald words of John the Baptist. The time has come. The time to repent. And this Lenten call to repentance, 2,000 years old, is fresh today as well. We need to hear these words. And we need to look for wilderness too. One of the joys, if I can say such a thing, of the first lockdown was to more fully experience the wonderful world of nature, to be out alone in it, alone but with God. Being out in the wilderness, out in nature, alone, helps us to put things into proper perspective to realise what material concerns and weights have blocked the path between us and God. We need to find wilderness places and times today. We need to use Lent wisely to look for those wilderness times and spaces, times and places, where we can be alone with God, to strip away the material concerns which weigh us down to hear the word of God, his comfort, his grace, and his hope, in this time too. Lent is a time for penitence, repentance, and self-denial, of fasting. We need to use fasting wisely too, then, for Satan the deceiver, with his wiles, will attempt to turn it back upon ourselves. To think that fasting is about losing weight, 
looking better, being more attractive. Bad fasting is about us. Good fasting is about God. So when we fast, we need to rejoice in it, not be burdened by it. When we fast, we need to use it to turn our minds to God also do something good and positive too. Perhaps fast from arrogance, selfishness, over-assertiveness. Not just cutting out sugar and milk in our tea, or giving up booze for 40 days. Fast from unkindness and be kind. Fast from anger and be happy. Fast from fear and trust in God. Let us use our Lenten fast to fill us with strength, to control our desires and focus our hearts and minds more fully on God. On Ash Wednesday we, must, we marked ourselves with ash as a sign that we are fully mortal. But dust and ashes and to dust and ashes we will return. But we know that we are more than that, that our souls are precious in the sight of God. Without God, we are indeed but dust and ashes. But with God and his grace and his love, Lent helps to remind us that we are more precious than gold or silver or rubies. So a happy and a holy Lent to you all in your wilderness wherever you find it. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as is most justly to you, Almighty, Majesty, Dominion, and Power, now and forevermore. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our Lenten journey, we hear Christ's call to renew and repentance. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father, aware of our own weaknesses, and ask for his strength and support. We pray for the leaders of the Church throughout the world. May they realise that love and hope and confidence in God's care are the most important things that people need to hear today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray and ask that all who are called to positions of authority in government or politics may work together to bring equality and justice to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for God's help for all who have abandoned their faith. May they once again find God during this Lenten season, wherever the wilderness journey may take them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we pray for the sick and the suffering, whether in body, mind, or spirit. May the Lord show us how we can be a source of strength and encouragement to them. By name, we pray for Stephen Treasure, Ernie Owens, William Skelby, Steve Pearson, Philip Mason, Regina Broadbent, Ava and her family, Gregory Cowles, Margaret Dark, Ned Winter Clyde, Jeremy James, and Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. Give them courage and hope in all their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died recently, that they may experience the joy of homecoming to our Heavenly Father, and share in the happiness of the glorious resurrection. We pray for the repose of the souls of Anne Goosey and Desiree Barry. All those we love and love still but see no longer, and all those who mourn their love. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, during this Lenten season, help us to seek the values that Christ taught us, which bring lasting joy in this changing and challenging world. Uniting our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed be God by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is lifted by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. The Lord be with you.
The same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for thanking us well to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, 
but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. To him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit. To live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves. Take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Son of Esau. 